digital world, cyber criminals are becoming more creative and aggressive using advanced technologies to breach defenses. But as threats evolve, so do technologies designed to fight them. That's where I think generative AI comes in. Unlike traditional AI, which uh, relies heavily on preset rules and supervised learning, generative AI brings new cutting-edge capabilities to the table, enabling defenders to anticipate and neutralize threats more proactively. Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of Analytics Insight Podcast. Here we explore the latest trends and innovations transforming industries today and I'm your host Priya Dialani. Now today we are exploring a game-changing innovation that's shaping the future of cyber defense, generative AI of course. We are going to take a deep dive into how Gen AI is transforming the traditional defender landscape, giving cybersecurity professionals new tools and capabilities to stay ahead of increasingly sophisticated cyber threats. Let's welcome Peter Bailey, Vice President and General Manager of Security Operations at Google Cloud Security. Hi, Peter. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me today. Great. I'm doing good too. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to have you uh, with us. And I think we are going to discuss something very insightful and very um, uh, crucial, I would say, uh, in our today's podcast. So uh, before we start, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting into deeper about uh, these these traditional defender landscape and then how generative AI is changing them, if you could help us, you know, guide us about uh, more about tell us more about Google Cloud Security, you know, what what exactly the uh, the entire section you know focuses on. Sure, I appreciate that, and I'll apologize in advance for the fact that I'm at a conference, so there's lots of background noise. Um, so I apologize right. to the audience for that as well. Um, yeah. yeah, so, so Google, Google Cloud Security is a division within Google Cloud. Um, at the highest level, we provide software and services to help defend our customers. Under, underneath the hood, um, we've got basically through the Mandiant acquisition we completed a few years ago, we've got incredible frontline intelligence and expertise. For up-to-date situational awareness, we bring to our customers about the threats that are targeting their organizations, trying to help them increase their cyber defense capabilities, increase the resilience, et cetera. In addition, we have a security operations platform that's Intel driven, and our customers use that to effectively manage their entire cyber defense operations, and respond to threats and immediate threats. Because we are Google, and because of Google's incredible scale that allows us to do security operations at incredible scale for our customers uh, and with incredible speed. And so we think we give some really unique advantages to our customers and our security operations platform. And last, we also have incredible threat intelligence through Mandiant, through Google. We have more knowledge of attackers we think than anyone else on the planet. And at the end of the day, cybersecurity is a knowledge game. It's about knowing who is attacking you, how they're attacking you, so you can properly defend your, or prepare your defenses, excuse me. And, and so we can bring you know, all those things to bear for our customers uh, in a way we think is very unique. Now, I'll, I'll get into AI in a little bit as well, but obviously a lot of investments in AI are what we think are as good as substantial terms that you for cybersecurity for the future. Great. Thank you for sharing those insights, Pete. And I think it's really fascinating to hear about the depth and breadth of a Google security approach, especially how it integrates across various services. Um, moving ahead, we would also like to you know know more about you, Peter, if you could help us understand how has your journey been till date, you know, uh, what what probably uh, triggered your interest in, in, in the security space and, you know, your contribution towards the company? Yeah, so I, I got into cybersecurity back in the late uh, 2010s, initially uh, with a company called FireEye, and I was the chief operating officer of FireEye, which is a public company, and actually owned Mandela, which is a division that we acquired in, in prior years. Um, we, for a bunch of reasons, ended up uh, splitting up FireEye and Mandiant because of the different missions, and I stuck with Mandiant, which was then acquired by Google. And so I came to Google through an acquisition. Um, I'll just say a little bit about sort of the fit between Mandiant and Google. Now, Mandiant's history is being on the front lines defending our customers you know, for the last 20 years. It is, at least in the United States, kind of the preeminent consulting cybersecurity brand. Um, and uh, with a team of you know about a thousand consultants that are you know performing incident response work, as well as helping our customers prepare for cyber attacks. And in joining Google, we found a company that really took security serious at scale. Um, there's a, a little known story, but you can go on YouTube and check it out about how Google was hacked back in 2010 by Chinese threat actors. And in response to that hack, Google basically rebuilt their entire infrastructure and took an entirely different view on how to provide services to their customers in a very secure way. 
and that really began them on a journey to become the most secure, what we call them, hyperscaler, but the most secure platform out there. And as evidence of their seriousness about that, we get sort of developed on the security operations platform. Uh, then acquired Mandiant more recently, acquired a company called Simplify as well, and continues to build a portfolio that we bring to bear uh, for our customers. So my journey uh, is I, I, I came along into this world about six years ago, and I will say that uh, in my six years being in cybersecurity, it's, it's just a, it's been a wonderful journey for me because I can't think of a better mission than to build products and services to help our customers defend themselves. It's a mission that really binds our organization. Everyone you meet from Mandiant or Google Cloud Security is here for that mission to help our customers defend themselves. And where we are today is we built out a, a platform capability, a threat intelligence capability, as well as frontline expertise that we think can help really any customer on the planet uh, defend themselves. And that's something we're both very passionate about, um, as well as something that we got to be every day thinking about. And sort of to complete my journey, I had the opportunity to to run a division within them. And so I'm responsible for um, the security operations platform itself, the Google Threat Intel capabilities, and we also have some managed um, what I'll call cyber defense unit capabilities where we help our customers in real time managing their infrastructure as part of their team. And that was also something that was part of my team. But all together, we were approximately there for our customers uh, wherever they are and helping defend them with either software or services. And that's really uh, what we're all about. Right. Um, quite an interesting journey, Peter, I must say. And, uh, uh, you know, I think when we're talking about security, I think it's 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 one of the, uh, <clears throat> a very growing concern for uh, businesses in today's uh, digital age. And I think when we're talking about um, AI systems, for example, so traditional AI systems could only act on the information they were fed. Uh, they lack the ability to create or generate new data in response to emerging threats. So, and also uh, that why I think cybersecurity defenses were, were more based on a reactive approach. Systems were built to respond after a breach had occurred. And even with modern AI implementations, many of the systems were focused on identifying and mitigating threats after they had already penetrated defenses. Uh, but but I think this is where a gen AI truly shines because Generative AI, AI, on the other hand, enables, uh, you know, um, the cybersecurity team to take more of a proactive stance in such situations. Um, so uh, if you could help us understand what makes generative AI distinct from, you know, the traditional AI system and uh, how it has the potential in transforming the uh, cybersecurity, uh, cyber defense strategy. Yeah, no, generative AI is extremely exciting for cybersecurity. You know, the baseline experience we've all uh, had using tools like Gemini or, or uh, OpenAI's uh, ChatGPT is generative AI is very good at summarizing large troughs of data, classifying it, uh, and generating new information based upon that. In a security context, if you can think about generative AI tools, be able to analyze huge amounts of data um, to look for patterns in that data and to serve up not just uh, information that is unique to specific attackers that it might find in that data, but also automate ways you can mediate and get that attacker out. It basically gives a, a cyber practitioner um, superpowers in that they can do 10x the work in terms of analyzing data, um, analyzing events that might be in their network, identifying those, and then remediating those uh, at incredible speeds. So at the baseline, we've already seen this in action, Gen AI is giving our practitioners using our products um, incredible capabilities to to you know see attackers at scale at much greater scale than prior as well as immediate those at scale. So if if you kind of think about the next kind of stages of that, um, we really think about Gen AI as a, a tool set that can begin automating various functions within cybersecurity and security operations. Today, an analyst is looking for and searching for specific events. They have knowledge of certain threat act actors. They're looking for different techniques and tactics or IOCs. And then if they find things, they're investigating them. And then once they investigate them and find a true positive, they're looking to a remediation plan. Generative AI has the ability to not only um, you know, help a, a, an analyst along in their job in terms of helping bring threat intel together more quickly, make suggestions about actions they might take, we can literally begin to start automating some of these functions in such that a, an analyst in the future could really be just focusing on the very, very high value tasks 
um, in automating various of, of, of the other tasks that uh, they'd be facing. And so, you know, long story short is, you know, the the job of a security analyst, um, which we think of as you know, threat detection, investigation, and response with generative AI can happen at a much higher speed uh, across a much larger data set and thereby you know, make defenders uh, much more capable of defending their organizations. So we're very excited about what it can do to really improve security operations. Great. And, you know, thank you uh, for such uh, detailed breakdown. And it's really fascinating to see how um, generative AI has the potential uh, to to transform the cybersecurity uh, space compared to the traditional AI uh, models, especially when it comes to um, defending against um, very increasingly sophisticated um, cyber threats. Um, now, I think um, generative AI has this capability of uh, which which goes beyond learning from past data because it can generate new responses, predictions, and even countermeasure measures. Now think of it as a system that that doesn't just follow the playbook; it it writes new chapters. You know, simply said. So I think generative AI can uh, simulate potential threats in real time, uh, model attack scenarios that haven't been even seen before, and generate defensive tactics uh, that adapt at an at attacker's evolving strategies. So this ability uh, to predict and generate responses make generative AI a very powerful tool in the cyber def defender's uh, landscape. So um, when we're talking about uh, people who are working um, in the cybersecurity space, so in what ways can generative AI um, help the cybersecurity professionals in coming up with strategies um, in, in the traditional defender landscape? Well, I can think of uh, several examples, but I think one of the most powerful is if you know, one of the core functions in, in security operations is building detections or building rules that are going to go analyze a data set and try to find anomalies. Um, those anomalies usually being some sort of IOC or, or tactic that we think a threat actor might be using. So again, if you can generate generative AI, if you can train Gen AI on the threats themselves, and if you can train Gen AI on the log events to understand what those log events mean, what they're saying, and then train it to go look for those types of IOCs and anomalies in a large data set. You can begin to train uh, models in a more agentic approach, which you know we think we all agree is sort of the next phase of the AI. You go on large scale hunting missions, and you can imagine that detection and we're no longer writing rules, but actually managing a fleet of AI agents to go off and, and perform these various hunts and functions. That's just one example of a use case where Gen AI. Um, can really give incredible power to to uh, a specific type of you know, security analysis within their security operation. Right, I think um, uh, with, with generative AI capabilities in the in the cybersecurity space, I think it's also um, encouraging um, the defenders in this in this uh, cybersecurity sector to you know change change their uh, strategies and evolve to the changing times. Uh, but but I think there's always a flip side uh, to to every technological advancement. Uh, you know, there's, there's there's no doubt that generative AI is a massive boon for defenders, and it's it's an undeniable question. But as with any powerful technology, the potential for misuse is also real. Now, uh, like defenders can use generative AI to predict and simulate attacks, and cyber criminals could also do the same. They could leverage Gen AI to craft more sophisticated operation scams, um, design undetected malware, or even automate attacks that evolve in real time. So the challenge here is, is not just in building stronger defenses, but it is also ensuring the same technology isn't being used to strengthen the attacks themselves. So uh, while Gen AI uh, helps defenders, uh, could cyber crim criminals also use it for their advantage? And if yes, how do we guard against these these Gen AI being weaponized by attackers? And um, is there is there any particular strategy that you follow at a Google Cloud Security? If we can highlight that. So so again, to sort of simplify the task of the defender, um, they're facing an attacker that is looking for, for holes in their defenses. That could be through phishing attacks, that could be through malicious malware, um, or any number of other techniques. And with generative AI, it's going to allow them to do that much faster at much greater scale. The task of defending against that, similarly, is looking for um, you know, those, those ingress points, looking for the attackers coming in through operation attack, et cetera, looking for malware to bring the code of the edges. And, and so in some ways, it is the same story and same set of issues, however, at much greater scale and speed. And so 
you've got to imagine that the attacker is going to use some of the same techniques they've used in the past, but much faster, much more customized at greater scale. And so it's going to put the onus back on the defenders to similarly leverage what they've built in terms of intelligence or property or anything. The touch zones, but training the MRS to do that at much higher scale and greater speed. So, so fundamentally, we think a lot of the attack surface evolution will be along those lines in terms of just, you know, sort of, you know, attackers using their own tricks, um, but at just much, much greater scale and a greater customization on the, on the target. And to some extent, we believe we can defend against that if we can give our defenders tools to allow them to scale much more quickly. However, you can imagine new and novel threats we haven't seen yet, used by very sophisticated cyber attackers, um, cyber actors, as well as by nation states. Um, you know, the things that keep us all up at night are zero days, where right? it's a new vulnerability that no one's seen before, a new attack, you know, and not until somebody's really going exploited. You know, we typically find these things and we have to develop a protection for it uh, to go find them. In. I don't think yet we've seen the first big wave of AI that's based upon sort of new and new attacks, but it's the thing we're all looking out for and expecting to start happening. There's much more sophisticated actors or using those numbers um, to, to build up their attack streams. In addition, if you think about AI understanding you know, the code base of uh, a lot of the products we use every day to defend our networks and be able to look for vulnerabilities in those code bases, that's another example. Um, of how it's scale, we think attackers can start looking for effective ways zero days. And so, so these are just some of the ways that we think about uh, how the attackers are going to be in a much better position in how we need to you know, in terms of how we're going to defend against these attacks. Right. And I think that's a very great point that you um, have, have shared. And um, it, it certainly raises some critical concerns because. It's always like a double-edged sword or when it comes to new technologies and the possibility of bad actors leveraging Jena is definitely a reality uh, we must face. And alongside it, it's essential to explore what measures uh, are being put uh, to place in stay, to, to stay ahead of these, these uh, malicious uses of uh, technology. Um, and as and when uh, we are looking to the future, the industry must also focus on creating some very ethical guidelines and international agreements around the use of Gen AI, ensuring that its development is steered in the right direction that benefits the society as a whole uh, as well. Um, but like you mentioned about, you know, um, uh, the, the, uh, the use of Gen AI and uh, how probably the defender landscape can benefit from the use of Gen AI. Could you, could you also share some real world applications that uh, Gen AI has proven effective um, in terms of mitigating some critical situations or has successfully thwarted a major cyber attack? You know, so I, I won't I won't talk about specific you know instances uh, where it's been involved in defending specific attacks. But what I can say is the examples that are good around how we are making security operations practitioners far more effective. Um, you know, kind of 10x the efficiency of being able to look at events, uh, be able to identify uh, bad actors and remediate those. That is that is real time stuff that is happening. We are seeing that today when we see customers that are leveraging AI. In addition, well, we know that the, the examples of threat actors out there starting to use this to make their efficient attacks far more sophisticated uh, and to make their attacks effectively more customized to the environment that they're attacking. That is starting to happen. Uh, it is really kind of using the same um, methods uh, like phishing is in Zinka, but a greater scale and greater customization. So you know, those are all things that are actually happening today and uh, things that we're defending against. I will say that despite the capabilities increased on both sides, the the way of companies are defending themselves still comes down to some very core principles around tech, people, and process. And so I, I want to sort of um, not not to sort of reduce the scope of the thread here. Um, I do want to sort of address that we have if if, if folks are following. A process that is highly cyber resilient in terms of how they're bringing out their cyber defenses, how they're different designing their defenses, how they're training their people, things like micro segmentation of their network, best practices. You're going to be in a great position to defend even against these attacks. And then leveraging AI tools to give your practitioners um, better capabilities and greater scale, you're going to be in a great position to defend against these attacks. There will always be the new and for sure. 
Um, but for the 98% of the tax we say day on and day out, they are much more typical types of attacks. Well, as I said before, greater scale and more customization. And we believe that one of the same concepts and philosophies that we recommend our customers use to build their cyber defenses are still relevant in this world. And I think it's just important point to say. Great. I think um, I'm sure our listeners will be really excited to hear about how these generative AI systems are being used on the front lines and helping utilize the threats that would otherwise go unnoticed. And I think the more we understand how Jenny is being applied in real scenarios, the clearer it becomes uh, just how essential this technology is becoming for modern cybersecurity strategies. Um, now, moving forward, let's talk about how generative AI helps defenders move from a reactive stance to a more pro- proactive approach in terms of threat mitigation. Now, with traditional systems, of course, we discuss the defenses are often built in response to the attacks that have already occurred. Uh, and the, on the other hand, you know, Gen AI gives defenders the ability to anticipate where threats might come from, allowing them to create more like a, um, a fortress that, that's clearly impossible to breach. So how do you think that generative AI can empower these cybersecurity defenders to become more proactive rather than reactive when we are specifically talking about threat mitigation? Yeah, well, I'll give one very specific example that we use today in our products, and it's called Attack Path Simulation. Where basically, you can create a digital twin of your environment, analyze that environment, um, you know, basically look for how attackers could come in, how they can move laterally from the environment, and how they effectively can get to the common rules of, of the organization. And by being able to model that out, um, we can then put up defenses and or break links in the chain that would allow to stop a defender from moving laterally from the environment. So, so tools like AI also give us the ability to model at much greater scale things like, um, you know, how an attacker might attack you and then you know, obviously anticipate that and go immediate with that in, in, in preventative sense. And so attack path simulation is just one of the tools that we're now putting um, in place um, that, that really are preventative um, from a, a cyber perspective. Right, right. And... Um, you know, we initially discussed about um, how uh, cyber criminals can use um, these Gen AI uh, capabilities to, to strengthen their attacks as well. So uh, are there any ethical concerns that, you know, as as a defender that we should be concerned about when we are talking about generative AI? And um, if you can highlight the significance of, you know, the overall regulation landscape as well. Yeah, well, I think, again, um, I want to highlight sort of what we're seeing in the world today in terms of, of cyber Actors, you know, one the thing that is growing the most today is ransomware attacks. Um, this has been an ongoing uh, growth factor in cyber attacks, but really in the last few years, we've seen this explosion of ransomware attacks, where folks are targeting large organizations with valuable data, um, getting into the network through you know some exploit, and then obviously taking control of, of that network of that data, and really shutting the company down. In the last few years, you know, we've seen this go from large financial institutions to retail and even more recently healthcare, which used to be off limits for cyber attackers. And healthcare really is um, one of the scarier things um, for cyber attackers to go after because uh, it usually means uh, people get hurt and there's loss of life. And we've actually been seeing that more recently. Another area is critical infrastructure, which obviously could have huge impacts uh, if someone gets in and shuts down. In our case, it was the colonial pipeline attack a few years ago, which shut down the eastern seaboard in the United States uh, when there was uh, a ransomware attack for. So I, I think it's important to also think about what we're seeing in terms of the, the trends themselves of the attackers. Um, you know, the the, the 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 rules that used to exist in the old days where cyber attackers would stay away from certain segments seem to be gone now. Um, we're seeing nation states acting like criminal organizations, uh, large government-backed cyber criminals um, really being in business to go to get money from, from their targets and being backed by um, you know, large nation states that, that I think uh, most of your listeners are familiar with. And so you know, these, these trends are disturbing, obviously. Um, you know, they're growing, unfortunately, each year, the, the attack service is growing each year. And so to kind of bring it back to your question, it is just incredibly important that we, we, we give our defenders these AI tools that we are developing and others are developing to do a much, much better job of being able to defend against these attacks and also in advance of the attackers using them themselves. 
when you think about regulated industries, as a, as a little part of your question, um, you know, we, we do face regulation in what we can do in the sense of things like data privacy um, in certain you know, parts of the world, uh, data, data residency restrictions. And so how we, we can use data, how we can analyze data is constrained in some areas. And, and yes, that does have an impact on our ability to perform the function of, of cyber defense in some cases. That said, we are constantly working with, with governments and regulators uh, to ensure that security is, is first and foremost taken into account, uh, that we obviously hear the privacy laws uh, wherever uh, we need to, uh, but that we are also able to do our jobs uh, and ultimately to protect our customers and for our customers to protect themselves. Right. Thank you, Peter. I think you've highlighted some really critical points in terms of uh, the ethical concerns and the overall uh, regulation uh, landscape that's that's pretty much evolving and it's really necessary in today's age where security has become a very crucial concern. Uh, having said that, one last question for you, Peter. How do you see the role of uh, Gen AI evolving in the cybersecurity landscape over the next five to ten years? Well, I think it's a great question, Peter. And I, I think um, we have some instincts on where it could really go longer term short term as i said it's going to give superpowers to the the defenders uh it's going to allow us to start doing things at much greater scale and greater speed like i mentioned before we also going to see a more agentic approach to doing various functions as as ai models can begin to learn and to reason you can imagine them looking at large data sets and you know learning how to look for anomalies and, and that is also something we see in short scope. I think I think longer term, there's sort of sci-fi versions of this where we have AI that is so intelligent that it can really just be a black box and do the job. I would say that whether that is a, a possible case or not, um, the thing that's really important to have in, in all these cases is the ability to uh, to audit. Um, you know, actions that are taking to be able to have visibility into options and to ensure that whatever automations exist through AI, that there is an opportunity for a human intervention at some point if needed. And more importantly, that we can really see the, the, the trail of events that happen. And that's really important for compliance and regulatory. And, you know, today we're in a world where we can really see every action that we take with cyber defenders. And that is important for making sure that we have proper coverage um, and can respond to regulatory bodies and compliance frameworks. And in a pure AI world with the black box approach, you, you can lose some of that. And so it's really important we can still have that visibility um, you know, if we ever do get to that world. But I think in the very short, medium term, the things I've outlined are very real and are, are going to happen for us and things we're really excited about. Because in general, we think that we're going to have better tools to help our, our customers defend themselves and they have turned the tables on some of these very well-resourced cyber threat actors. Great. That's really insightful and it's really fascinating to think about um, how generative AI could reshape the cybersecurity landscape over the coming years. And with that, I would really like to thank our listeners for joining us um, today on our podcast. And thank you so much, Peter, for taking out your time and effort and helping us cover some truly fascinating ground about how generative AI is transforming the defender landscape and what the future truly holds. Uh, thank you so much, Peter. Thank you so much for your time. And again, apologies for the background noise. Great to spend time with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter. Uh, so this is for our listeners. Stay tuned for more deep dives into cutting edge technologies that are shaping the future of cybersecurity. You can view all our previous uh, podcasts on Spotify and other leading platforms. Thank you so much.